connect the power plug of the rotor flow machine to the AC power supply. Then remove the packaging carton and the tie rack paper from the tray. Check the packaging and the set for damage. Remove the holding straps from the oxygenator, the sterile box and the centrifugal pump. Do not open the sterile box. Hang the sterile box with the tubing from a suitable point, or place the box on the console. Then place the oxygenator in the holder. Prepare the filling lines and the priming bag. Connect the spike to the supplied priming bag and hang the bag from a suitable point. We now use another filling line and connect it to a priming liquid. In this example, we use 1 liter of 0.9% normal saline as priming liquid. Connect this filling line to the venous port nearer to the centrifugal pump, which is shown in the figure now. Notice the position of the freeway. And now we use another filling line which is connected to the priming bag to the port farther away from the centrifugal pump. Also notice the position of the freeway. Now the connection is completed. Now we are going to prepare the extension line and also the freeway stop clocks which will be mounted on the inlet and outlet of the oxygenator. Now remove the yellow DAN cap from the oxygenator. It should remain open during the priming procedure. Now open the clamp of the filling line which is already connected to the normal saline. This starts the filling procedure and the solution flows into the centrifugal pump and the oxygenator. Place a clamp between the two freeway stop clocks in the venous line. The air from the centrifugal pump can now escape into the oxygenator. The air in the oxygenator escapes automatically over the de-airing membrane. Now the centrifugal pump and the oxygenator is filled. We now revisit the whole priming circuit again so that every candidate had a thorough understanding on the circuit and make sure the connection is correct. As you can see, the extension line is already connected to the oxygenator. Now we are going to proceed to the next step.
Now apply the ultrasonic contact cream to the appropriate position as shown in the video. This ultrasonic cream can dry out during longer procedures, which may impair the result of the flow meter. Then we insert the rotor flow into the drive unit. Ensure that the outer edge is inserted under the locating lock. Make sure adequate gel is applied. Now the cover of the flow hook can be closed. We can now turn on the rotor flow machine. First, we set it to zero and then we can turn on the flow slightly. This demonstrates air flowing through the centrifugal pump during the initial stage of priming. Change the spike of the filling line initially connected to the normal saline bag to the priming bag now. Open all the clamp of the two filling lines and then make sure that every freeway is in the appropriate position and now a closed loop circuit is formed. Start the rotor flow again and allow the liquid to recirculate at about 3000 rounds per minute. This will ensure that any air bubbles in the tubing are retained in the priming bag eventually. As you can see, air is gradually collected in the priming bag. Don't forget to prime the extension lines also. Air bubbles is still far in the circuit and that means priming is not yet completed. Make sure that there should be no bubble in the tubings. Once all air bubble is removed, clamp the filling lines, recap the de-airing cap and also remove the clamp between the freeway stopcocks. Connect the air supply to the oxygenator and adjust the position of the pump. Priming is finished. We can stop the pump now. Finally, let us revisit all the components in the rotor flow circuit.